Hi Mason, here at uh, Cliff Technologies and you've got a lovely array of storage options here, right? Thank you. I'm particularly enamoured with these tiny little uh, new format SSDs. Can yes. you tell me a bit about them? Yes, we're very excited about this. This is called the Atom Drive by Glyph. And this is a single Atom Drive. It's basically using the same memory that's in the new MacBook Pros. So it's the M.2 memory. So it's a really slim form factor SSD. Really, really fast, up to 480 megs a second. And it's using the new USB-C connection connections. So this is the, the plug, the new ah, so standard for USB. So it's, native. it's quite hard to find native storage with USB-C. It, it is. And what happens is now that with USB-C, it's compatible with Thunderbolt 3. And it's pretty, you know, compatible with all previous versions of USB. Yeah. And the construction, as you can see, is a really solid aluminum construction. It's actually the same material that the MacBook Pro is made out of. So it's aircraft grade aluminum. And then what we have here is a two drive. So two M2 memory sticks in one, in one drive. And what happens is those are RAID 0 together permanently. And so you're getting speeds of up to 780 megs a second out of there. Up wow. to two terabytes in storage uh, space and also again with USB-C. So it's going to plug into any of the future um, uh, computers that are made with Thunderbolt 3 or USB-C. But it's also backwardsly compatible to any previous version of USB. I'm guessing these are great for like multi multi track audio. Absolutely. Video. So we have partners in here. Uh, Avid is actually editing multiple tracks in Pro Tools using the uh, Atom RAID drive in the show today. Um, you can actually edit 4K video straight off of that drive. It's that fast. How many streams? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good question. <laughs> More than one. Probably. More than one, absolutely. So what's the kind of price point for these guys? So these go. These are about 450 euros for the single terabyte drive, and about 850 for the uh, for the Atom RAID, the two terabyte drive. And can you? Uh, so the Atom RAID. That's so then you double up the storage. You're not striping. Okay? Yes, basically it is. It's taking two M.2 memory sticks and it's striping them together in a permanent hardware RAID zero. So, it's so a, it looks it's like one drive to you. Double the capacity. So you're getting double the capacity, but also a huge performance benefit. So up to 700. 80 megs a second in speed out of those drives. That's super, very, super fast. Yeah, it's, it's actually super faster than the previous version of USB. Of USB. Yeah, oh, interesting. I mean, I don't, do you do, I mean, one thing that's interesting as well, I mean, do you do um, any enclosures that allow you to read, like, from media cards are super fast? Because one of the issues that we get we is don't. the transfer we're, we're working on, so that's uh, something that's coming. So um, with the advent of Thunderbolt 3 and USB-C, um, you know, there's a lot of connectors and adapters and way, things that you need to use to connect to previous uh, formats. So um, we're looking to, to develop a hub, hopefully. That'll be a device that we can plug, you know, straight into your computer and I'll plug all your other devices into the hub. And I guess the thing is USB-C, because, I mean, Thunderbolt, while great, there's a massive license fee for that. I mean, it's an expensive deal. There is. It's very expensive to, to develop and bring to market products on Thunderbolt 3. The nice thing about USB-C, again, is it's exactly the same connector as Thunderbolt 3. So any USB-C devices are actually compatible with Thunderbolt 3. Um, now, if you have a Thunderbolt 3 drive, you will actually be able to plug into Thunderbolt 3, but not into USB, right? Um, and so the only advantage of having Thunderbolt 3 would be if you had a, a multiple, you know, multiple drive RAID. And the cables are cheaper. Yeah, and the cables are cheaper. Absolutely. So what else have you got along here? There's a nice selection. Of, so we've I, got a... I have, I have a fetish for luggage, storage, sure. and the synthesizers. So, so these are just little portable hard drives. This is our little black box. Um, just a USB-C, a uh, regular USB drive. And this is basically makes an excellent, you know, media storage drive. Uh, time machine backup drive, it's really portable, solid uh, metal construction, so it's really rugged and durable. And this is our more rugged design. So this is basically housed in a rubber, you know, a rubber uh, rugged sleeve, really, really durable, and it's also using USB-C, just like the Atom drives. So this drive is gonna be compatible with any, you know, the new uh, MacBook Pros with Thunderbolt 3 or previous versions of USB. Anything to get rid of those pesky dongles, right? Yes, yes. And, I mean, with the new computer, is exactly. That's what we want to try to get away with, is having to use all those adapters. Are these all SSD, are these all SSD based? So these are either spinning or SSD, depending on which option you want. So they're two and a half inch drives. You can put SSD or spinning drives in there. And then this is a full size, just a desktop version of that. Also USB-C, uh, but kind of in a, a rugged design. Full size drive, up to 10 terabytes in storage space in a rugged, semi-portable design. And then these are miniature, these are our studio line of products. So these are designed to be used in a studio environment. 
They're really, really rock solid, reliable, very, very quiet operation. You don't want to hear a fan and, and a noisy hard drive running when you're uh, re recording and when you're editing. So they're air cooled, are they? They've just got kind of air, they're air cooled, are they? Yes, they're air cooled. And um, these hold, you know, miniature drives. So this two and a half inch drive can either be an SSD or a spinning drive. And then what this is, is holds two drives. So this can be a RAID. This can be either a RAID zero or for, um, you know, for speed and for uh, capacity, or it could be a RAID one for redundancy, where it actually mirrors your content across the two drives in the... In the uh, that, that's always been, the, when you do that, where does the table of contents live? Because what I found in the past with cheaper RAID systems is one drive goes down, you take the other one out, and there's no information as to what's on that drive. Yeah, so if it's a RAID zero, you're gonna, there's no redundancy with RAID zero. Right. It's striped across the two. If you lose one drive, you are gonna lose all, all of your But if data. you've got, if you've got a, a RAID, uh, RAID 1, I guess, is it? Yes. Where you've got two drives and they're just mirrored. They're yeah. RAID yes, and that, what, the good thing is these are all hardware RAIDs, right? So it's not done in software. It's actually you know, hardware switchable. You just flip the disk switch to go from RAID 0 to 1. And so what you're getting with a RAID um, level 1 is a complete separate copy of your data on, on each individual drive. You could literally pull them out of there and you'd have an identical... And you could use them separately. Yes, right, so yeah. if one drive fails, you have a complete copy on the other drive. Simply replace the, the failed drive and it's going to re-mirror it and you're back in business. So. And I guess why you just unscrew it and slot it in? Is that the... Yes, and we have wonderful support. So obviously if it's in warranty, we're happy to perform that service and replace the drive for you. But they're very easily serviceable. Simply remove the back, pop a new drive in there. And, um, and you're up and running. Very attractive. These, I guess these are three and a half inch enclosures, right? Yes, yeah, so these are three and a half inch closures. Again, these are designed for use in the studio, either on the desktop or they're rack mountable. So this is a single drive enclosure that goes up to 10 terabytes in the speed. And this particular one actually supports some legacy connections. So you can see eSATA, Firewire 800, and there's two, so you can daisy train, and USB. Um, Built-in power supply that's switchable, so it's going to work in the, in the States, it's going to work in Europe, 220 or 110, automatically, and again, really designed for quiet, quiet, reliable um, operation. And then this is a two-drive RAID. So you have two drives in here, similar to the smaller one, but full size, right. um, up to 20 terabytes, right? So two 10 terabyte drives can be in there. And this particular version is a Thunderbolt. So it's Thunderbolt 2 and USB 3. And you can see also it's a hardware RAID. So and you can do just a bunch of disks. Yes. Yeah. And so it's really, really easy to configure. Simply switch the, you know, switch to whatever RAID mode you want, reset the unit, and the unit automatically configures itself. So for the do you, have you considered doing, because we're, where we, we do, obviously, are doing video, I'm doing video now. Our yeah. video stuff, we use J boards, but we have. Uh, boxes where you could just hot swap out the drives and just pull them in and out. You should, do you, yeah. Do you, I mean, because these, so these are all closed systems. Yeah, so these are closed. Um, I mean, they're easily serviceable, as I said. But this, our four drive rig, ah, is actually got the mobile. There right. we go. Yep. So with a little tool, you just pop the thing and you can actually pop these sleds out and easily, you know, swap and change drives. It's a four drive RAID, so it supports not only the RAID 0 and 1, but also RAID 3, 5, and 10. So, for example, with the RAID 5, you can actually have four drives in here, and you can, if one drive fails, you can replace the drive, the unit will automatically rebuild your data, and you can continue working. So you've got kind of the best of both worlds, where you've got the performance benefit of a RAID for, for uh, speed, and you've got redundancy you know, of, of like a, you know, a RAID for um, actually protecting your data. And I guess you might use that for something like, you know, a live show or playback and that's what you could, you're doing. Yeah, yes, like, I mean, we have a number of, you know, people are actually, you know, editing, obviously, off of this. A lot of people are using it just for a, a very large receptacle of storage. With all the, you know, media around these days, up to 40 terabytes in, of space available on a, on a desktop unit is at a very so, reasonable price. So with RAID 5, if you take one of those drives out, can you access the data on that drive, or is it kind of... No, out? so what happens is RAID 5 is actually storing what they call parity data across um, all the drives. So, yeah, if you take the drive out, it's not going to be really usable data on that drive because the data is actually kind of spanned across all the drives. Right, okay. um, but it will be able to, be based on the data that it has left on the other two drives, it will be able to rebuild the data from that fourth drive. So basically with RAID 5, you have to remember that there's about a 25% overhead. 
right? Ah, uh, yeah, because you yeah. Need that, so you're yeah. you're you know if you have four one terabyte drives, one of them is essentially being used, um, or that much space is parity data. So you're losing about twenty five percent of your space. Um, but that's the trade-off from you know performance and um, yeah. reliability and the redundancy. So I'm guessing all of these are available. Uh, information and prices available on your website. They certainly is, uh, are at glyphtech.com. All products and uh, pricing and availability are there, uh, and they can be purchased anywhere. You know, there's lots of uh, retailers and onlineers that sell our products everywhere. Thank you very much. My pleasure.